Shopify grows with your business no matter how far or big you grow. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all in one e commerce platform to their in person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at Shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to Shopify.com slash income to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. This is The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik. What if I told you there was a simple way to shave five minutes off your marathon time? And no, it's not a fancy pair of shoes or some questionable supplement. In fact, it's completely free. All it takes is a specific shift in your training during the last three weeks before your race. And studies have shown that up to 64% of recreational marathoners aren't doing this. The taper phase of your training is a decrease in mileage and intensity in the weeks before your race. The goal is to help you absorb all the hard work you've done, allowing you to peak when it counts most on race day. But less than 40% of runners are actually optimizing their taper. How can you be one of the runners doing it right? Let's find out. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik, and my mission is to help you improve your running, your mindset, and your life with science-backed training and plant-based nutrition. On today's show, I'll explore what the ideal marathon taper should look like, the common mistakes that runners make during taper, and how to get your mind ready and avoid the taper tantrums. I'll also cover the best guidelines for marathon taper nutrition based on your size and your needs. By the end of the show, you'll have the knowledge you need to have a successful taper, setting you up for your best marathon yet. And don't worry, you don't have to take notes or try to memorize all of this, especially if you're running right now. If you want all the details on how to run your best marathon, including taper, just sign up for my free 12-day email course at theplantedrunner.com slash marathon. That's theplantedrunner.com slash marathon. And of course, we'll put the link in the show notes. Don't forget to stay tuned all the way to the end of the episode for another Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. If you're in the thick of marathon training, you've put in a lot of long, hard hours. You've boosted your endurance, plenty of long runs, and sharpened up your speed in your workouts. When race day is three weeks away, you've just finished your longest and most difficult long run of your marathon training cycle. Now what? Welcome to the Marathon Taper. Tapering is the concept of gradually and intentionally decreasing your training so you could reach the starting line fresh and at your peak. While the theory of tapering is relatively simple, there are quite a few pitfalls that runners can fall into in the final weeks before the big day. Taper too early and you risk detraining and being underprepared. Taper too late and you could be overtrained on the starting line, or at least not ready for optimal performance. So where's the balance and what does the science say? A 2021 study found that recreational marathoners who followed what they called a strict taper finished on average around 2.6% faster than those who had a minimal taper. And good news for women, the effect was even more pronounced in female finishers. So what exactly is a strict, carefully controlled taper? I'll explain exactly what I use for my athletes. And just to warn you, I'm going into all the specific details so you can learn to peak perfectly on the big day. Let's start at the beginning, or should I say the end of your marathon buildup. Your longest long run should be scheduled three weeks away from race day, and the next two long runs should progressively get shorter. The final three weeks of training before the marathon will do little to improve your fitness since it's already built. 
but you certainly can harm your fitness in those weeks. So when in doubt, less is more. During taper, your overall weekly mileage should decrease 10 to 20% per week, but don't stop running completely or change your frequency of running. Your body hates sudden and drastic changes, so ease into it. You can start by trimming your normal easy runs during the week. Your long run is dropping down as well, so that's usually enough in the third week out. In the second week, all your runs are a little shorter, including your speed days. If that's not enough to drop your mileage by 10 to 20%, you can add a rest day. And of course, you should always add a rest day if you're feeling particularly tired, zapped, stressed, or fatigued. Your body treats all stress the same, so if you need a break, now is the time to take it. During the final week before the race, which we call race week, most people take an extra rest day, but not everyone does. As I mentioned, your body loves predictable patterns, so many runners prefer to reduce mileage and keep their normal frequency. Gradually decreasing mileage is part of the taper recipe, but what about workouts, strength training and nutrition and the mental side of it? I'll go over that right after a short break. I want to tell you about a unique opportunity for you to get stronger, faster, and stay motivated to hit all your running and nutrition goals this year, and that is to join the PR team. Each member of the team gets a custom training plan made by me for you based on your unique fitness goals and lifestyle. Everything you need to crush your running dreams is included, such as strength training, recovery, and even cross training if you want it. I include weekly mental strength training as well as tips and nutrition guides. But here's where it gets really cool. The group has its own page in the app where we share workouts, ask training questions, and get feedback from me and the other teammates. And each week I create an exclusive private podcast just for the team based on the questions I get and what I see in their training each week. And I usually end up sharing behind the scenes and exclusive sneak peeks with the team that I don't share anywhere else. So instead of joining a Facebook group or sitting through another Zoom call, you get to listen to tailored advice on the run and you don't have to do all of this alone. If you are ready to take your running to the next level and join an amazing team of runners, head to theplantedrunner.com slash group and join us today. It's more affordable than you think and I can't wait to have you. My favorite way to get all my stinky running clothes clean is with Earth Breeze. Earth Breeze Eco Sheet look just like a dryer sheet, but it's ultra concentrated laundry detergent. It eliminates stains and odors while being kind to the planet and your skin. No more ugly, heavy plastic laundry jugs filled with messy blue goo, which we all know is mostly water. Earth Breeze comes in a lightweight cardboard envelope that hardly takes up any space in your laundry room. And they offer flexible subscriptions delivered right to your door for free. If you decide to go back to your old stuff for some reason, you'll get a full refund on your Earth Breeze purchase, no questions asked. My clothes are clean, they smell fresh, and I never have to feel guilty dragging home the big orange jug from the store again. Right now, you can receive 40% off Earth Breeze just by going to earthbreeze.com slash plantedrunner. That's earthbreeze.com slash plantedrunner to cut out single-use plastic in your laundry room and the landfill. That's 40% off your subscription at earthbreeze.com slash planted runner. Welcome back to the planted runner. I'm coach Claire Bartholik. We know that we need to gradually decrease our mileage and taper in the final three weeks before the marathon, but what should our speed workouts look like? Your workouts during your marathon taper should all be about practicing your marathon goal pace in various types of tempos. This is to burn marathon pace into your muscle memory so that it becomes second nature and your confidence builds. This period of time will also help tell you if your marathon goal pace is realistic. If your marathon pace tempos during taper feel far too hard, you're probably being too aggressive with your goal. Marathon pace should not feel easy unless perhaps this is your very first one, but it should not be super challenging for just a few miles. An example of marathon taper workouts would be six miles or 10K marathon pace tempo in week three before the race, a two by three mile or 5K tempo in week two, and a three mile or 5K marathon pace tempo in race week. 
These all, of course, will include a mile or two of easy jogging for both the warm up and the cool down. If you're used to two speed days a week, or if you're a more advanced marathoner, you can add an additional marathon taper workout in the third week from the race. I like to have my athletes run what's called a taper cut down in that first taper week, three weeks out from your race. After a mile or two of warming up, run your marathon goal pace for four miles. Then without stopping for a rest, run four more miles, just about as fast as you can. Then cool down a couple of miles. Those faster miles might be 30 seconds faster than your marathon pace, or they might not be that much faster at all, but it gives you one last chance to blow out the tubes with a little speed. For the rest of the taper workouts, forget about going any faster than race pace. This is pace practice, not fitness building. Going too fast during taper can steal your speed on race day, so stay on target. The day before the race, a 15-minute slow jog is perfect to get the blood moving without spending too much energy. What about strength training? As you taper down your running, you should also be tapering down your strength training. Again, you should not be trying to change things up too much from normal during taper. Instead, just back off the length and intensity. So if you normally train twice a week, you should still do that in the third and second weeks out, but your routine should be shorter with fewer reps and lighter weights, if any. You should never lift to fatigue or failure during taper. And then you wanna stop strength training completely 10 days before your race. Fitness gains from strength work do not realize for about 10 days, and you don't wanna risk soreness or fatigue from lifting. Finally, race week arrives. This week is critical to get right, so you are fresh and ready to go. I'd say the most important thing to remember is that you cannot gain fitness during race week, but you certainly can hurt it by overdoing it. You're simply going through the motions so that your body is tricked into thinking everything is normal. If you're used to doing some mobility work, such as dynamic stretching, you can continue doing that as normal during taper, but now is not the time to add anything new. The next big factor during race week is nutrition. It doesn't have to be too complicated, but it does take planning. In general, you want to decrease calories slightly while keeping up the carbs. Because you're running far less in taper week than you did in training, you won't need as many calories. A mistake that many marathoners make is not easing up on how much they eat, even though they're burning significantly fewer calories. But this can be a tricky balance, so don't overthink this too much. It's absolutely essential not to try to restrict your calories, especially if you're feeling hungry. We do not want to be in a calorie deficit. The idea is to be conscious of eating a little lighter than you were before without under eating. Your nutrition goal during taper is to load up your muscle glycogen stores without gaining fat from eating more and running less. But here's the thing, you should actually gain weight during taper. But ideally, that's from the extra glycogen and water that you are storing, it's not fat. Having plenty of fuel and hydration stored inside your body before the race is the goal. So don't be alarmed if you gain two to four pounds while carbo loading, I promise you that's a good thing. The goal for carbohydrates should be to maintain a daily intake of three to five grams per pound of body weight. So for a 150 pound athlete, this will be approximately 450 to 750 grams of carbohydrate, which breaks down to 1800 to 3000 calories of carbohydrate per day. Now that is a lot of calories and that is a big range. So be sure to find a number that's relative to your overall caloric needs based on your body size and how much you run. While you're loading up on carbs, don't forget about the protein. Protein is needed to repair and reverse muscle damage and fatigue resulting from all your training. Athletes need more protein than sedentary people, so your goal is approximately 0.6 to 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. So going back to our example of the 150 pound athlete, this would be 90 to 105 grams of protein per day. Many of your carb sources like grains and beans provide protein as well. One serving of pasta has about 42 grams of carbohydrate and seven grams of protein. One slice of whole grain bread has about 20 grams of carbohydrate and four grams of protein. 
In order to decrease some calories but keep up your carbohydrate intake, you'll have to trade some of the calories coming in from fat for more carbohydrates. Good fats should still contribute 20 to 25% of your total daily calories. Since you'll be eating fewer calories, this will mean fewer total grams from fat. Here are some of my favorite examples of swaps you can make to cut down on fat and increase carbohydrate during race week. Pancakes with maple syrup instead of avocado toast. Pasta with tomato sauce instead of a creamy sauce. Veggie salads with an extra dinner roll and vinaigrette instead of a full fat dressing. About two days out from race day, you'll also want to taper down your fiber intake. While fiber is an essential part of any healthy diet, too much fiber can slow down digestion and cause GI issues on race day. Foods like white rice and potatoes are perfect in the two days leading up to the race to be sure that they're easily digested. The day before the race, you'll want to eat your biggest meal at lunch, not dinner. Yes, it's a common tradition to have a big pasta dinner the night before the race, but eating this meal earlier in the day allows plenty of time for digestion. You don't want to be uncomfortably full on race morning. Try eating a big meal earlier and a normal-sized meal the night before. Always choose foods you've had before. Now is not the time to try a new type of pasta or cuisine just because you're in a new town and heard about the great reviews. It could come back to haunt you. My personal favorite pre-race dinner is a plate of plain potatoes with ketchup. (laughs) Yes, I know that sounds a little strange, but it definitely worked for me. I could rely on that anywhere I traveled and I knew that it would sit well with my stomach the next day. Now let's talk about hydration. We know that dehydration can significantly impair performance, but it is preventable with adequate hydration in the weeks, days, and hours leading up to the race. To ensure you're properly hydrated, sip on fluids throughout the day, the day before your race. Water is sufficient, but juices and sports drinks can help meet your carbohydrate needs if you're struggling to get all the carbs from food. Adding a little salt to your water or adding some salt to your food can also help you retain water. This is normally a bad thing, but it is a great thing for marathoners. Drink when you're thirsty, but be sure you are urinating every two to three hours and your urine should be pale yellow. If it's darker, then hydrate some more. If it's clear, you may be hydrating too much. Overdrinking is a real issue for marathoners, so don't overdo it. The day before the race, it's smart to avoid alcohol. This might seem obvious, but even a small amount of alcohol can lead to dehydration and poor sleep quality. Not what you need right before the big day. I recommend that athletes avoid alcohol for all of race week. All right, now you've got a handle on your nutrition and your running plans for taper. The final piece of the equation is getting your mind ready. One common misconception is that once you back off your mileage and ease up on your workouts, that you'll suddenly feel fresh and springy. That can happen to some people, but many runners actually feel the opposite. Some of us just don't feel good during taper. We can get cranky and moody as we adjust to the change in hormone levels from running less. Some people even start to get sick because the immune system lets down its guard after months and months of hard training. Not feeling great happens to a lot of us. This is because it takes 10 to 12 days to fully recover from hard workouts, which means you're not suddenly gonna feel all sparkly and peppy. And of course, some people feel nervous and anxious about the big day. Without as much running scheduled to ease the mind, the nerves can get a little frazzled. We worry about losing fitness and gaining weight. We obsessively stalk the weather forecast and we stress about making sure every last detail is taken care of. In other words, we get the taper tantrums. First of all, it is normal to feel anxious or nervous about the big day. After all, you've put in a ton of work just to get to the starting line. Now that you're running less, your mind has a lot more time to ruminate over all the things that went wrong in your training and all the things that could go wrong on race day. The key to handling that is not to avoid the negative thoughts, but to acknowledge them and then add a positive spin. For example, if you start thinking about that one long run that you missed or the time you couldn't hit your speed work on the track, 
Accept those as facts, but then remind yourself that a good training block is built of many, many runs, and no single run is more important than any other. If you've been able to do most of your training moderately well, that's honestly enough. And it is far, far better than doing too much. The next step to overcoming those doubts and building confidence is to go over your running log. Look for all the runs that you did run really well. The memories of a job well done can go a long way to quieting those negative thoughts. A couple days a week, take some time to relax and visualize every detail of race day. Imagine yourself following your plan perfectly and also imagine everything that can possibly go wrong. That way you can prepare ahead of time and you won't be caught off guard. Even better, try out my free guided visualization podcast and use it often during race week. You can get it at theplantedrunner.com slash guided dash visualization. That's theplantedrunner.com slash guided dash visualization. It's not an exaggeration to say that a well-planned taper can make the difference between a great marathon and an awful one. By taking the right steps with your training, nutrition, and mindset, you'll be ready for the best marathon yet. And now it's time for the Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Today's topic is the power of silence. As much as I love running with music or a podcast, it can transform your running to leave the earbuds at home sometimes. Without headphones, you can hear your breathing, your footsteps, and the world around you. You can learn to use the patterns of your breath to feel your pace and even calm yourself down. The sound of your feet can tell you if you're using quick and light steps, which is key to good running form. And in a race without headphones, you can hear the spectators cheering you on. Yes, it can be a mental challenge if you always run with music to suddenly go without, but it can also turn into your superpower. Thank you for listening to The Planted Runner, part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Don't forget that you can win free access to one of my sprint session masterclasses just for writing an Apple podcast review. So be sure to write yours right after your run today. Reviews are the number one way to boost this show's reach, and it's a great way to tell me what you'd like to hear next because I read every single one. Have a great run today. Hear Her Sports is a podcast for everyone who loves stories by and about women striving to improve and make a difference in their lives. I am your host, Elizabeth Emery, a former professional cyclist. In every episode, I introduce a female athlete or woman in the business of sport through a thoughtful conversation about who they are and the terrific work they're doing. My guests and I explore the glorious and frustrating issues in sports, history, equity, training, nutrition, and so much more. Join us for inspiration, for community, and for love of being a strong athletic woman.